hello welcome back to j infotech's youtube channel in this video will be taking you through how to make a land use land cover map on arcgis pro or with arcgis pro a land use land cover refers to the physical and human characteristics of the earth's surface as observed and classified through remote sensing or ground-based surveys the first step when making a land use land cover map is to download or have your Landsat imagery prepared. You can download Landsat imagery from USGS at Explorer, create an account and you will be granted access to download data USGS at Explorer. Okay, yeah. So, this is what the site looks like. Create an account. I already created an account with them. Then you'll be able to download data. All right. The next thing when you have your Landsat image downloaded is uh, you have to download. The Landsat images come in different bands. Band 1 to 12 or 11. Okay. So, there are different uh, band combinations and your band the band you'll be combining will depend on your your project what you're trying to the analysis you're trying to carry out okay but for this we are doing a land use land cover map so i'll be combining band five four and three okay that's the color infrared all right so let's get into it so first i have my study area in my workspace already i'm working with our career on those states okay now the next i'm going to add my landsat imagery band five four and three all right Okay, I'm going to select the band 5, 4, and 3. Click OK. Alright, I now have them added to my workspace. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to combine this band to merge them into one. Okay, so I'll be using the tool called Composite Band. Okay. Composite Band. Then here I will impute my rasters band 5 in that order band 5, band 4, and band 3. The next thing is to save it, output raster. So I'll be saving it in a folder already attached to my workspace. And I'll save it as a pure, or I can just save it as composite. Okay, save. Then click on run. All right, great. I now have my merged band or combined band, combined band five, four, three to give us this color infrared. Okay, since I'll be working with just Akure, I don't need these other areas. So I'm just going to clip according to Akure's extent. Okay. I'll use the tool called Extract by Max. I impute my raster, which is the composite, then my feature marks, which is the accurate, and I'll save. Save it as accurate land sat. Click on save. Now it's giving me this red sign here because I didn't add TIF extension. 
I'll just add dot tif. The tif extension works with rasters. Run. All right, then I have my composite clip according to my study area extent. So I'm just going to remove these ones since I don't need them. All right, so I'll be adding a base map to my workspace. And the essence of the base map, while well, when you're working, when you're trying to do your land use land cover analysis, the essence of a base map is to is to make sure that you're correct with your classification. Make sure that the feature you're actually defining is what is in reality. Okay, so I'll just add base map. If you want to add base map? This is add base map here. And choose any base map you want right so for me i choose the imagery hybrid okay so i have my base map i have my landsat okay now the next thing for me to do is to classify to create a training sample for my study area okay now you can see creating a training sample is like taking samples of each feature on the landsat like on the head surface okay so now these colors, these different colors here represent different features on the head surface. Okay, this blue represents the developed or built up areas. This green here, as you can see, the texture of this green here is rough, which tells us that that place is a rock. Okay, and we have the red, which is the vegetation. Then we have some brown areas, which represent the bare land. Or dried vegetation okay then uh, in case your landsat has a dark blue or black color around somewhere that represent uh, the water bodies available in that area okay so let's get into classification I think I wrote something down here okay okay so these are all the colors represent Rock outcrop, vegetation, water body, dried vegetation, and developed areas. All right. So now for us to classify, to create our samples that will help us to classify, we we'll go to imagery here. Now this is the tool we use. It's turned off because we do not have our uh, landsat highlighted. Right. So I'm just going to highlight the landsat. And another thing is before we start or before you start, you can set your set your parallel processing factor to zero. All right, so mine is already on zero. Okay. So let's click OK. Great. So the next thing is to now take our training sample. So I'm coming to imagery under classification to see training. Here we sample. have different samples tied to different features. So first, I'll be taking the sample for the developed areas. When you click on this, then you click on the polygon you want to use to take the samples. When you come back here, it should be, should have turned into these plots for drawing. Okay, so I'll zoom in and take samples. Okay, you can take as many samples as you want. But like here, yeah, minimum of like five is this for you to have a and for you to have an accurate result. Yes. I'm just taking as many samples as I want. Mm. 
Okay. Alright, so you notice that I think I had mistakenly clicked uh, shrubland. Alright, if this happens to you, don't panic. You can always change the name of the feature later. Alright, we'll get to that. So I'm just going to select everything here, all my samples. I'm going to select all my samples, then collapse it, merge them into one. Then the next I'm going to be doing for the barren lands. Okay, I'll click on the barren, then zoom in to where I have the brown colors to be able to pick the barren lands. Okay, like the brown areas. Okay. Like I said you can always take as many samples as you want. Just keep panning around, zooming in to make sure that you are actually on that color. Okay. All right. So I'll just also come and click on all the samples named Baron. And then I'll collapse them, merge them into one. So the next I'm going to be doing, I'll be doing for vegetation. So actually, you can sometimes you're taking a sample and then you realize, oh, the name of my sample is not here. Name of my feature that I'm trying to classify is not here. You can always create a new schema. But for me, I'll just use the samples available here and then change the name later. Not that big of a deal. So I'll click on forest to represent my vegetation. And I'll take the samples on the red part. The red part represents the vegetation. Take as many samples as you want. Okay, so I'll click on all the samples named forest and collapse them. Alright, collapsed. Okay, now the last one is our rock outcrop. That's the green areas on our map. So I'll just go with another sample okay. All right okay so i'll zoom in to where i have the red areas sorry This is where I have my green areas. I'll take my samples from there too. And you take as many samples as you want. Alright, so I'm going to select all my samples again and collapse them. Alright, the next thing after you've taken samples of every feature that you that you're seeing on your landsat, the next thing is to save. So I'll click on 
save here this so i can save it as i'll just save it as akure akure sample or i'll just let me just use sample okay then click on save all right there we have saved our sample now the next thing is to now go into the work of actually classifying turning this into a classified image okay so i'll click on classify here yeah i'll use the my classifier will be suppose vector machine then i'll add my training sample save it as sample okay then click ok right i'm going to save it save it as accurate Then click on run. all right great so we now have our image classified so now to uh, remember that our barren well was our barren barren land then this forest we used it to represent vegetation so i said that we can always change the name so i'll just click on right click here and click on symbology okay under the symbology i'll change this forest to vegetation Then this shrubland was representing our built up areas. So I'll just change this to developed. Now this abacious was representing our uh, rock outcrop. So just change the name to rock outcrop. All right. And that's it. That's it. That's just basically how to change the name the names has changed here okay so and you can also change the coloring color your color representation you know you can change it barren should be brown vegetation green developed i think this color combination is quite all right okay so i'm not going to be changing it but if you want to change yours you can change it from here okay so for we to know that we are correct for us to know that we are correct we can Turn this off, check the base map. Yeah, you can see that the part of our developed is really developed areas. These parts are really uh, rocks. This part, they are really vegetation on our base map. You can see that. Yeah, and that's all on uh, making a land use land cover map. So we just made a land use land cover map for Akure in those states. Thank you for watching this video and we hope that we keep seeing you on our channel and we'll keep dropping more and more videos for you. If there's anything you'd like us to address, any questions you have, please drop it in the comment section. Thank you.